Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today I'm in Whiteville, North Carolina, visiting Van Underwood Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram, and I'm checking out a 2021 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Rubicon in the very first hybrid system that Jeep has put out in the Wrangler, and it's the 4XE trim level. This Wrangler is sitting on 285-70 BF Goodrich tires wrapped around 17-inch alloy wheels with a semi-gloss black finish. It also has four-wheel disc brakes with ventilated disc rotors on all four wheels. The name of this color is Bright White Clear Coat, and the, the color itself, the white color, is nothing special. It's not a pearl coat or anything like that. It's just a regular white but you'll notice that there is some blue accents that reveal that this is the 4XE. So it actually says here on the hood, 4XE. The Rubicon here on the side is outlined in that same blue. And the recovery hooks here in the front are also a gloss blue. So it has the same headlight system, LED, halos, projector, and reflector combination headlights with daytime running lights here on the outside, on the fenders, and a reflector LED fog light at the bottom. Like other Rubicons, it does have the vented hood here, the little uh, places for the windshield to fold down and rest here and be secured. So you do have that capability of folding down the windshield, just like the other Wranglers. And right here is something different. You can see it kind of sticking out here and this is where you plug in so this is a plug-in hybrid so you're able to drive it and it's able to charge the battery while you're driving but if you want to drive drive it just with the electricity uh, then you want to go ahead and top off the batteries for the drive system and you can do that here and it's up to 21 miles for an understand of just electric power and uh, and then you would use the uh, the hybrid system with the engine. The 2.0 liter four cylinder engine is what it powers the vehicle when the electric motor is not powering it. Take a look at the profile here. Now this one has the uh, the rock rails. There's a very heavy duty uh, protection piece that's mounted to the side of the Jeep for um, like trail debris, rocks, that kind of thing from da possibly damaging the, the sheet metal there. So this is a really heavy duty uh, protection. And then it has them plastic around the inside uh, and a little bit on the outside edge of each fender well. And it has body colored fenders. And you do have black candles, black side mirrors. So this one has the hard top, but it also has the soft portion in the center. And I'll show you that in just a minute. Here on the side, you also notice it has the Wrangler Unlimited badging and the Jeep badging with that, that blue color. And even the trail rated badging is modified slightly with that color. This is what the key looks like, and it's a huge key. And it's, a, it's actually a full proximity key, so you can use the vehicle 100% uh, just by having it with you. It could be in a pocket, in a bag, whatever. It also has a physical key and a little switchblade pops out, so that's pretty neat. So it does have lock, unlock, remote start, and a panic button here. But looking at the key, you can't really tell that it's the, the hybrid. There's no ac blue accents or anything like that. Let's go ahead and push that panic button. See what happens. It just beeps the horn and flashes the lights. So as long as you have this key with you, it could be in your pocket, in a bag, as long as it's within a close proximity, a few feet of either the driver or passenger door, uh, on the outside of the door, you can lock the door by pushing this button. To unlock it, you simply put your hand behind the handle and it'll unlock. So it has a sensor here and a completely separate button for your lock. There's also a physical key location here on the driver's side only. So here's the inside of the passenger side doors, basically just like the other Wranglers, except for it has this blue contrast stitching and a French design right here in the center. Soft touch surfaces all the way from here, all the way down to this portion. And at the very bottom, it's a hard touch. There's a net pocket at the bottom. 
Uh, there's a little handle here, and this is actually enclosed, so you can use that as a pocket if you need to. Your door locks are here. Your power windows are controlled in the center. I'll show you that in a little while. And uh, you can remove these doors, and there's a little handle right here, so you can grab a hold of it and lift them off their hinges. There's a threshold, manually adjusted seats like all the Wranglers. And it has leather trim seats. It has that blue stitching, just like there on the door. Double stitched French stitching. Then you have the Rubicon badging in that same blue that we find everywhere. Very comfortable seats and they look sharp as well. They are heated as well. So here's the floorboard and it has the factory uh, Jeep upgraded uh, floor mats that are rubber and they snap in place with these big snaps so they stay in place and they're contoured perfectly and it kind of looks like a uh, a map a a map that shows the elevation elevation map that's what it looks like just kind of looks similar to that you have the jeep handle up here locking glove compartment small jeep glove compartment of course but it goes in there quite a ways down but it's just kind of narrow and in, in addition to the handle here, uh, you also have a handle here. Now there's a handle on all four doors, including the driver's side, to help you get in the vehicle if it's a little bit high for you, uh, especially if you lift it up, it helps out. You have more of that stitching here and here on the dash. So I had the soft top open so you can see what's going on. There's some speakers and a dome light there in the center. And while I have the top open, let me show you where they hide. The GPS and satellite radio antennas are right here in that center part. So you can see what it looks like up here. Here's the inside of the back door, very similar styling. Uh, it has a soft touch, just like the front. Um, and this hard touch here at the bottom, net pocket, very similar to the front, just smaller. And here's the back seat. Now the back seat is a little bit higher uh, than the uh, regular Wranglers. Also, the, the seat doesn't fold down into the floor because under this back seat is the cooling system and batteries for the hybrid system. So before this was a, an area in which you can put some stuff, or basically these seats would fold down into there to make the cargo space flat with the, the seats. But so they had to add um, that stuff somewhere. So it's a good place to put it. On the back of uh, both front seats is a hard plastic. There's also bag holders here, net pocket, and then a Molly type webbing for connecting things to it. It's kind of interesting. Power windows are here. For the back doors, two USB charge ports. You also have a uh, power outlet, just like you'd find in your house. And it's a three prong, 150 watt power inverter. And then there's a little storage pocket there and here. And it has full coverage mats back here. So you can see it goes all the way from one side to the other and they connect in the middle. Cup holders and an armrest here in the center that you can lift up out of the way. Now it does have the latch system for car seat car seats, and you can fold these seats down. So it's a 60-40 split. Let's go ahead and lift this side up. And you can see this is raised up. So this is typically not raised up so high in a normal Wrangler. Now we can fold the seats down. So when we there's a handle right here. When we lift that up, it flops down the headrest and then it, you're able to push this down so it's a little bit different in that in a re, than a regular wrangler for one it's higher so you can see it doesn't match the height of the cargo area it's quite a bit higher but you can add to your cargo space and you can do it in a 60 40 split so now we still have that passenger space over there and then we've added to our cargo space. We can do it vice versa, either way, or both.
Now with the Wrangler Unlimited, of course, this is the four-door version. So you can see that the front door is quite a bit larger than the back door. Uh, so it's a little bit easier getting in and out of the front than the back. But really it's not that bad um, because there's so much headroom here and it's kind of squared off. There's a little bit of uh, tapering there, but the swing of the door helps out a lot. Also with the newer Wranglers, the, the doors are will stay in place. They won't flop around on you depending on like if the wind's blowing or something like the, the previous generation. So that's nice. Taking a look at the back, uh, this little flap right here, that's part of that soft top that's been retracted. It'll completely go flat once it's forward. Um, but it does have the privacy glass back here. And the third brake light is right above the spare tire. And you can change the height of that. So if you had a bigger spare tire, then you can lift this up higher. So that way it'll accommodate for a larger spare tire. The backup camera is in the very center of the vehicle, both, um, you know, left to right, but it also has a good distance off the ground. So a lot of vehicles will have the backup camera kind of offset somewhere next to the tag, and it's also kind of really low. Uh, so this is a really good way of incorporating and integrating the backup camera in a perfectly center position and, um, you know, having that high position. So that way you can back up to a trailer or something easier, just generally seeing what's behind you. So there's your, uh, tow hitch and does have the four and seven way outlets here parking sensors across the back kind of integrated there in the bumper uh, these are reflectors not lights do have a recovery hook here in that blue color LED tail lights tag lights turn signals reverse lights everything is LED back here as far as the lighting goes so let's go ahead and open this up. So this handle has the same proximity system to where you can lock it here, lock the vehicle, and you can also unlock it by putting your hand here. So it swings out. Now, you don't wanna swing this uh, tailgate too hard. Now you notice it swings out quite a bit. So it gives you full access to the cargo area. Uh, but as far as swinging this, you want to have maintain control of this tailgate because it does have a lot of weight on this, uh, this tire and rim attached to it. So if you're swinging it or slamming it, then, um, you know, it could over time cause an issue as far as bending or messing up the hinges, uh, just because there's so much weight being moved here, uh, when you're, when you're swinging it out. So here's the inside of the tailgate it has a little, uh, cool little graphic here. It says the JL and a different um, wheelbases and different information, just trying to be cool. There's also different accessories that they sell that attach here. So you can have like a little uh, little table that flips down or a net pocket or different things that you can attach there. Lots and lots of accessories for Jeeps, it's unbelievable. Okay, so now that we have that open, we can lift this up. And you'll notice now that it does have a rear wiper. It's kind of hidden before. All right. So here's the cargo area. And you can see that when you take the hard top off, if you want to take it off, it still has body colored um, panels around the, the roll cage. So it matches the vehicle. It's really nice, really nice touch there. So it's an Alpine subwoofer here on the right side, integrated. On the left side, it has a 12 volt power supply and you'll notice a little battery here uh, showing you that this power supply connects directly to the battery so you don't have to have the vehicle turned on to use it. It's always supplying power. So if you have these seats occupied with passengers, this is how much cargo space you have, which is pretty good amount. Um, there is tie downs here. So if you're going off road and stuff, it's a good idea to tie down your cargo. So it's not flopping around on you while you're hitting bumps and going through the trail. Uh, also, this is a, a compartment here that's, that will lock. So when you have the tailgate shut and the vehicle locked, this will not be able to, you can't open it because it goes over top of this, this, this piece right here. So this is an, a lockable storage compartment in that way. And this is actually where 
they they have the cable to charge it. Now it comes with a regular uh, 110 uh, volt three prong type charging cable, see? And so this will take like 12 hours to charge it, charge it up. Uh, but you can get the upgraded cable uh, for the 220, but uh, you know, you will have to have that type of outlet in your house readily available. So that's the system there to charge. Has a nice little bag. And this is just a general cargo spot to put some stuff. There's also places to put the uh, door hinges or go here and the roof hinges or, or bolts here and the windshield bolts here. So if you take the doors and stuff off, you will have some loose pieces that you will have to have a place for and they provide those places here. And it will be secured when you close that piece and lock the tailgate. Um, also, we'll go ahead and open this up. This is where you'll find your spare tire and tools. No, just the tools for the spare tire. You already saw what the spare tire is. But this is also uh, locking. So all this will be secured when the tailgate is shut and the vehicle is locked. All this stuff will be secured, but it's readily accessible and it's packaged in here. Nice, pretty nice as far as I'm concerned. But on this, uh, on the, without the tailgate, this is not, it doesn't lock on its own. It requires the tailgate to be shut and locked in order to, for that all to be secure. This is pretty interesting. It actually has a locking fuel door. So push that and the fuel door is here on the driver's side, just like other Wranglers. So I thought it was pretty neat. I think that's the first Wrangler I saw that had a locking fuel door. And it's a pretty traditional cap tether. And it doesn't really have a place to put the cap. So you just kind of like gently put it down there, I guess. Um, either way, it looks like it's going to touch the painted surfaces. So um, doesn't really hang there, but uh, that's something that they probably need to address. As long as you have the key inside the vehicle, uh, you just press and hold the brake and push this button. Now the engine may or may not start, so it, but it will say ready. So you can see where it says ready there. So now it's ready to put it in gear and drive. So even with the engine not running, it's going to use the electric power. Here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat. Now you notice the uh, floor mat snaps in place just like the other side. There's your accelerator and brake pedal. There's a little tiny bit of room here for a, um, a clutch. But you can see there's very limited on the leg room. That's typical Wrangler for you. And to lift the hood, there's no internal latch. So this is allows the, I mean, the hood is accessible all the time. So just pull these down and release each one of these like so. Release that one and release this one. It's easier to do when you don't have, you're not holding a camera. Okay, so now the engine just started. So it's gonna randomly start and turn off, um, depending on what mode you have actually. And I'll show you that when we get on the inside. So uh, when we lift up the hood, there's a latch here in the very center. We'll have to lift it up, move it to the right. So you can see there's a latch. You just move it to the right to release it. And it does require a prop to hold it up. And you can see the prop's yellow. It's on the underside of the hood right here. And it swings down to where it says prop. Okay, so the underside of the hood is all insulated. Um, there is some seals around the outside, but it's not completely sealed up. Uh, mostly just for airflow and a little bit of noise damping. There's an insulated battery here. There is a plastic cover over the engine. This is a 2.0 liter, four cylinder engine. And that's the main mechanical engine. Of course, it does have the uh, the electric motor which can drive the vehicle as well. The inside of the driver's side door is just like the other side except for it has a few more buttons. Uh, it has this. So you got your door lock controls here. This is for your side mirror adjustments. So you just pick a side and adjust it with this little pad. Now the side mirrors are heated so when you put your um, 
rear defroster on, it would also turn on the heated portion of the side mirrors. You see this little triangle? That's for your rear cross traffic alert and blind spot detection system. That's the indicator for that. Now the driver's seat, while it is a manual seat just like the passenger, it does have the ability uh, to be raised and lowered. And this right here is your lumbar adjustment. So you can see it's quite a bit of a, I don't know if you can see that moving, but it, it does adjust quite a, quite a bit, uh, quite a bit. So in and out, you can fine tune it. Some vehicles, you, you move the lumbar adjustment, you can barely tell a difference, but this one you can definitely tell it does have a lot of support. To the left of the steering column, there's your headlight switch. So it has off parking lot headlights on and automatic function. Dimmer switch for your interior gauges as, as well as your ambient lighting. Down here we saw that, that's your um, fuel door release. But then it has these three buttons. Uh, so hybrid, this is a normal hybrid like you'd find in any other hybrid. It would alternate back and forth automatically between the electric motor and the gasoline engine. Uh, the next one is specifically the electric portion. So if you want to only use the electric motor and not the engine, you can select this. Now this is an e-save. This is, emphasizes more on the gasoline engine and tries to save up and store as you drive and charge the batteries. So you have these three options here. So it's really nice to have that, um, that, that control over the hybrid system and not just it do it, do whatever it wants to do type thing. So it has a tilt and a telescoping steering column that locks in place here. So you notice the handle is really easy to see and get to. Before I put the shade up, just want to show you the little tiny dash here. It has these little storage area, quick access ports there and speakers. And there's a little light sensor for your automatic headlights. And these, there's a series of lights right in here. Your hybrid uses instrument panel state of charge indicator lights on the dashboard to indicate the progress of each charging cycle. Each light represents a percentage. One blinking light means the charge is 0 to 20% complete. One solid and one blinking light means the charge is 21 to 40% complete and so on. When the charge is complete, the lights will go out, the charge cycle will end, and the vehicle will go to sleep to conserve energy. So I'm sitting in the driver's seat checking it out and I have the seat all the way down and all the way back. I'm six feet tall just to give you an idea of the potential legroom here. Now there's no footrest here on the left side. So my leg just kind of like just kind of dangles there, my foot, and it's, um, it's kind of hard to get a comfortable position uh, unless I do this. So, it's, so that's, that's always been an issue with Wranglers uh, with me anyway. Um, and there is a stopping point for my knee here, uh, but it does have some overlap space on this side. All right, so there's the steering wheel. It has that blue contrast stitching there in the center part, same blue as everywhere else, basically. And really nice, impressive steering wheel, soft to the touch, has a good thickness, very impressive. You have metallic accents here. It does have the uh, the buttons on the back of the steering wheel back here, so my fingers line up when I'm driving, so I can adjust the volume on this side. So you have volume up and down. There's also a center button. So there's up and down, and then a center button. And if you can see that. So the up and down does the volume on the right side. The center button cycles through um, the audio source on the system. On the left side here on the back is up and down is changing through your tracks. Uh, audio tracks, radio stations, whatever that kind of thing and then the center button um, changes through your presets on your radio only. Here on the front has cruise control so you can turn it on here set it with either the top or the bottom button resume and cancel. It's pretty straightforward as far as cruise controls go. On the left side um, this is your Bluetooth phone, so you can answer, hang up, and then you have a very advanced voice recognition, a lot more advanced than you'd find in other brand vehicles, um, to where you can utilize a lot of features by using your voice. You just have to know how to use it. So it comes with a completely separate manual uh, teaching you what voice commands 
to use, how to use them, what order, all that stuff. And uh, for the people that like that kind of thing, it does. It is very useful um, in the Jeep brand. So these these arrows and this OK here correspond to the screen between the gauges. We'll get to that in just a minute. Windshield wiper controls are here on the right side. So it's front and rear windshield wiper controls. On the left side is your turn signal and your head high beam and low beam headlights here. Pretty standard. So here's the gauges. And so you have a digital screen here in the middle with a big digital speedometer, we're looking good. There's RPMs on the left side, engine coolant temperature. And it basically, you're, the vehicle, even if the engine's not running, it will still say whether the vehicle's ready or not. Here on the right side, uh, there's a little indicator needle on what's going on with your system. So as you're driving, if you're like coasting down here or something, this little needle can go into the charge zone. Um, it actually can go up here and, and show how much uh, power you, you are using, um, the percent of the power. So that's pretty neat. And then your fuel gauge is here. Here in the center part, uh, it shows a range uh, with the total range. And then it has the battery, the range in which, how long you would actually go only on battery. In this particular case, the battery is not charged, so zero miles. Up here, you actually have a percentage of the battery charge, uh, the amount the battery is charged. Your odometer is down here, what gear you're in is here as well. Um, and then you have your average miles per gallon, uh, digital speedometer, so you have some basic information. Digital clock up here to the top left. So, you remember these buttons. Remember these buttons right here? Um, we're gonna use those to control the screen. So if I scroll up and down, you can see it says number one speedometer. If I scroll down, number two, vehicle info. Now that I'm in the vehicle info screen, it pops up the digital speedometer on top of it, and it also allows me to scroll right or left and get more information about the vehicle and get temperatures and pressures all through here. So there's quite a few of them. And it goes back to the tire pressure. Um, so if we scroll down again, it goes to the off-road pages in which there's different views. So this shows the articulation of the, of the, you know, the vehicle, uh, the steering, um, you know, how level ground you're on, that kind of thing, the pitch and roll. Scrolling down again will be your it, sh it says energy economy, so typically this would be fuel economy, but in this case it's fuel and your energy that the vehicle produces using the battery and the hybrid system and all that stuff. Um, so you can, there's two of them here, and you can reset these independently. Uh, scrolling down again will show you information about your hybrid system. Trip info, now there's two trips, A and B which you can reset these independently. It's gonna show, um, you know, the battery, the fuel, the total, average miles per gallon, and the time as well. This is the seventh one is just whatever your radio is doing. The next one will just be stored messages. Um, and then you can go into screen setup and change some of the things that are around on the edges of the screen if you want to. Scrolling down again will take us back to the large digital speedometer. All right, now here is the other screen. So we saw that screen. This is the touch screen. So the Uni Uconnect system uh, with with Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge, Ram, all that stuff is very simple to use and it's the same format basically. You have the icons here at the very bottom and it allows you to quickly go to a particular thing that you wanna to go to. So the first one right now is radio. So you can see it shows presets there at the top, what your radio is doing, what it's playing. So it's on satellite radio. You can also change AM, FM, satellite radio. And then there's more sources in this case. So we've got uh, auxiliary cable, USB one and USB two. 
in addition to the ones that are shown here. You can do a direct tune, especially satellite radio. There's lots of channels, so you can tune it directly if you need to. You can also quickly go to the audio and adjust that as well. So the next one uh, will be the climate. Um, there is some redundant redundancy here for convenience. Um, and I'll show you that below. There's some buttons for the climate control down here. But uh, on the screen, you're able to change where you want the air to blow, the driver and passenger. Uh, temperatures are separate. And then you have your fan speed. You can sync both of them. That's a nice feature. Front and rear defrosters, all that stuff. The next one would be controls. See the icon here, but there's also a quick icon here as well. So if you're in the climate control, you can always go here because these icons at the bottom are customizable. So you don't always have that have to have that up here. You can access it through the climate control. So this is where you'll see where the heated seat, heated steering wheel um, options are. You also can see the backup camera without putting the vehicle in reverse. You can also turn the um, the 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 dimmer mirror so you have a auto dim rear view mirror and you can turn that feature off if you want to and also you can quickly go to your settings as well so if you want to get that this is actually here so these some of these are shortcuts and like i said there is redundancy as far as buttons for convenience so the next one is your apps so this is where you'll find the things that you want to have so let's say we want to change that phone down here let's say we want to have the off-road pages and then we'll put that and replace the phone. So now that's there. Um, so that way we can customize the icons there at the bottom depending on what our needs are. Travel link, that's nice to have. Um, travel link is, you're able to find gas stations and different things. So if you're out of town and you're in an area in which you're not familiar with, you can find the nearest gas station, sort it by brand, sort it by price. Um, or whatever, or distance, or whatever. It's really, really handy to have while you're travel traveling if you know how to use it. Um, it does have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto capabilities, so you have your projection manager there. All right, and um, so it's just basically just different icons here. So the next one for for different features, of course. So the next one will be your navigation, and we can put in a particular address we can search for an address um, we have different settings here but let's just view the map and see what it looks like you can uh, pinch zoom and move it around kind of get your bearings if you want you can change your map view as well it's a really good system it's a good clarity so let's go to the off-road pages so this will be handy while you're actually on a trail or something takes a second to load up and has a little animation that's pretty cool okay so we saw the um, some of the inf this information in the other screen um, but so this shows the status of the steering angle so as I turn a steering wheel it'll give us a steer steering angle also whether the sway bar is connected um, whether the front axles uh, locked or unlocked same thing with the rear um, transfer cases and two-wheel drive high just kind of gives you the status of everything um, you can check out some gauges here these are handy um, especially your transmission temperature and your your, your coolant temperature that kind of thing um, oil pressure all this stuff is important while you're you know on a, especially a really severe trail or um, heavy grades that kind of thing uh, pitch and roll so this just gives you just like what we saw before but it's a, a larger view of it All right, and then last we already saw is the settings. And this is where you would set up the vehicle, whether you want the vehicle to say beep the horn when you lock the doors, that kind of stuff, or remote start. Um, so you can set it up when you first get the vehicle and then you know it's uh, pretty much set up for the most part. So that's kind of a quick rundown of the, the way you use the screen and some of the features that it does have. Down here, uh, there is a physical volume knob and these are rubberized uh, texture here on the outside of each one of these knobs. Really nice quality feeling. So volume, tune to the stations. This is your fan speed here. Driver and passenger temperatures, um, where you want the air to blow, your heated seat controls. So it's a high, medium, and low for heated seats for both the driver and the passenger. Front and rear defrosters as well. Um, you can mute the radio. Uh, right here is your 
traction control. So if you need to spin tires, uh, you, you need to turn this off. So default will be on, so you need to turn it off. And it actually has an off light. It lets, it lets us know that's turned off. Uh, this button right here, when we push that, uh, it turns on the max regeneration. So if you want to get as much battery charging going as possible, turn that on uh, when you're slowing down as well. So it'll actually, you know, really slow the vehicle down when you let off the gas uh, when you have this on. There's parking sensors here. There's your four-way flashers, by the way. Parking sensors, you can turn them off if they're bugging you or whatever. And then here is your select terrain. So this is kind of like a cruise control for off-road. Uh, you will have to have it in four-wheel drive for it to work, of course. And then uh, you can turn the screen off. So you can push that button and turn the screen off if it's distracting you. Just tap it to turn it back on. All right, this is where your power windows are. Uh, the controls are not in the door. Um, they're one touch down, but going up, you will have to hold them. If you let go, it'll, it'll stop. Uh, you can also turn off the ability. Like if you got kids in the back, you don't want to mess with the windows, you can turn that feature off. So right here is a 12 volt power supply and you can see it has a little key letting you know that it's switched on and off with the keys ignition system. Over here, media. So we have a USB A, a USB C and auxiliary inputs here. And a cover, which is nice to keep stuff from getting in there. All right, now, um, so here is your ability to remember on the screen it says you lock your front and rear axles this is where you can actually do that so front and rear or rear only disconnect your sway bar by pushing that button then you have four auxiliary switches there on the right side you can tie those to different lights additional lights or light bars or whatever you happen to be uh, in need of a switch for uh, it has those four auxiliary switches all right, so here's your shifter, and it has a little Jeep up there on the top, looking pretty cool. Let's go ahead and put it in reverse. It's pretty standard as far as the shifter goes. We put it in reverse. The backup camera pops up here. It has active guidelines. As I turn the steering wheel, you can see those turn as well. It gives you an estimated trajectory of the vehicle and the width of the vehicle as you go, and a center line as well. Now you notice that it's a wide angle view and it has a distortion to it. That's why it has those guidelines. But you're, it gives you a good visibility from the bumper to the sky and all around there to the sides as well. Now the second thing that'll happen when you put it in reverse is the parking sensors will be active and a rear cross traffic alert. So the parking sensors also have this little visual, uh, little visual aid here. So as you're driving in reverse, if there's something back there that is, um, you know, causing it to beep, it senses something. It'll not only beep, but it'll also give you a um, an indicator here on whether it's left, right, or center and approximate distance uh, that is behind the vehicle. All right, now we have neutral and the drive. And then if you want to manually change to the gears, just move it to the left and you can bump it forward and back uh, like a ratchet shifter in order to change to the gears. And also here's your four-wheel drive control. Um, there's two-wheel drive high, four-wheel drive high, and then you have your um, four-wheel drive high part-time in which it will, like an all-wheel drive type system, engage when, when needed. And then you have neutral and then four-wheel drive low. So this is really heavy-duty, low off-road power needs, basically. So there's a handbrake parking brake, has a stitching on it. There's a little storage compart compartment there underneath there. Here's cup holders, and it has a little space to put a phone or something in the middle. This is all rubberized. All this is rubberized. And there is a, um, these little bumps here uh, compress, and that way you can utilize the space uh, for different size cups. So it actually squeeze in there. And, um, and it'll hold it for you, so that way, if you have a bottle or something, it's not gonna be bouncing around so much. Okay, so here's the armrest. It has a stitching on it, nice and soft, very soft, like a pillow. And then this lifts up, 
in two portions. This top portion is a smaller area. There's places for wires to go in and out of this compartment. The second one, so there's actually two, two levers there, top and bottom. The second one allows you to access the larger compartment and there's places for wires to go in and out of this compartment. You can see it has a little rubber floor in the bottom and a backlit USB port in here as well. And there's a little light here as well. That rubber mat at the bottom is removable. So if you want to take it out and clean it, put it back in, you can do that. The rear view mirror, uh, it's an auto dim rear view mirror, like I mentioned, that you can turn on or off if you need to. And uh, so up here, this is for that shade. We'll get to that in a minute. You do have some roadside assistance buttons here. It does have a um, its own cellular connection. So even if you don't have your cell phone, you can call for help. All right. The visor has like a vinyl wrapping on the outside. A little clip for registration or something there. There's a mirror and LED lights, two of them, which is nice. Home link garage door opener controls are here on the other side. Another clip as well. It also disconnects and you can slide it over. And you notice this is a metal piece here, not a plastic. Basically the same thing on the other side, except for it didn't have the home link controls. Okay, so let's go ahead and before we look at the, sh the, the, the retractable shade, the power retractable shade, let's look at the visibility in the back. Because it's actually pretty good. Um, there's lots of windows there and the, you know, the pillars aren't that bad. It's more about the passengers and the cargo area blocking your view than anything else, it seems like. Okay, so now let's go ahead and push this button. All it takes is one press. So get a good view of the button here. And we're just going to push it. And it moves it back. It's a little slow, but it's nice and easy. And it coils up there in the back. And it can be, gives you a completely open air experience for both the front and the rear passengers. Without, that's like the easiest way. You don't have to take any panels off. You don't have to take top off. You don't have to have a place to put all that stuff. It's really, really nice. Um, so, really easy. And by, you know, starts raining or whatever, we just push the button again and it closes. Or if we just don't want the wind on us. So easy. So that combination of hard top, you have the look of the hard top, but the the niceness of the soft top and the convenience of it just being a power retracting and it seals up nicely it's really nice all right so there you have it thank you for watching and thank you to van underwood chrysler jeep dodge ram i'm gonna have this window sticker in copied and pasted in the description and you can also use the pause button to check it out and read it here on the screen if you'd like. Um, but the main thing that a lot of people may not understand is when you're looking at a window sticker, it starts off with um, you know standard equipment and then it continues down, has interior, exterior features, and then here's the second column, and then it goes to optional equipment. Now we're looking at things that are added to this trim level so not all trims are the same you know so depending on the brand but you know a lot of vehicles have options so these are upgraded options then you have your total price there and there's lots of different options for Wranglers of course so and there's your fuel economy it's a little bit different than you'd normally see because it has the electric plus gasoline and then gasoline only separate There is some Ford and made parts in this vehicle, so there's the breakdown of that. All right, thank you for watching.
And thank you to Van Underwood here in Whiteville, North Carolina. I'll have their link to their website in the description, and I'll see you guys next time.